Well, let's return to the situation in Syria. We were talking about it a little earlier, the evacuation in eastern Aleppo, parts of eastern Aleppo. Turkey's foreign minister has said that 4,500 civilians uh, have left the area since midnight, and that brings the number of evacuees so far to 12,000, though many thousands are still trapped, tens of thousands possibly. Last week here on BBC News, we heard from Haid Haid, a Syrian academic working for the Chatham House uh, think tank here in the UK, telling us about uh, his sister who was trapped in eastern Aleppo, um, and she's among those evacuated and brought out safely. Uh, we're glad to say he joins me now. Haid, thanks for coming in again. Thank you. Um, tell us a little about what, what's happened and, uh, again, your family connection here. Well, basically, my sister was trapped inside uh, the BCG area of Aleppo and for almost 10 days now. We have been waiting for her to be able to evacuate the area, uh, but uh, it didn't happen until this morning. Basically, the last few days were quite difficult because there was uh, some kind of uncertainty whether this deal will, will uh, go through or not, and uh, the conditions there were quite tough. Uh, they have been waiting uh, for almost 20 hours mm -hmm. and, uh, outside. It was freezing, it was dark, and they were not sure whether they would be able to make it out or not because that was the last chance, basically. Luckily, they were able to leave, but many others, they're still there. As you said, thousands of civilians, they're there. And so far, at least three people were reported dead while waiting to be evacuated. So the situation is quite dire there. Where were they taken to once they were brought out? Where have they been taken to now? And uh, what are their circumstances now? Well, basically, most of the people uh, are taken from A, where they are besieged, into a drop uh, of uh, uh, location, which is uh, right outside uh, the area controlled by the regime in the countryside of Aleppo. And from there, people are making their own choices where to go. Some of them, they have relatives in the countryside. Others don't maybe have some people they know. So each one is making his own or her own decision on, uh, on where to go. Uh, people are trying to help, but the situation is quite bad because you have thousands of people. And uh, the, the, the capacity of the small charities who are trying to help is quite limited. Uh, we need to do more in order to uh, provide those people with the right conditions because although they are leaving uh, uh, the besieged area, the situation where, uh, in the places where they are heading to is still not safe. The daily uh, bombarding is still ongoing. Uh, by the Syrian regime and by Russia, and the situation of those who are still inside Aleppo, who decided not to leave, is still also unclear. So we need to uh, guarantee the safety of those who chose to stay. When we talk about numbers, I, I know it's quite difficult, but um, the Turkish Deputy Prime Minister last week actually gave us a number. He said he thought there were 80,000 people, uh, maybe 100,000 people who um, should be brought out. Do we have any clearer sense of the kind of numbers involved today? Not really, because, as you said, uh, but, uh, the numbers are between 50,000 and 100,000 people. The problem is that the situation is, is, is badly damaged and there is no access to people there in order to know how many people are there and how many people are willing to, to leave. And this is why we're only dealing with a small percentage of those who are uh, actively waiting outside uh, for hours and hours to be able to leave, while at a later stage we need to do more in order to go and knock on the doors, in order to know if people want to leave but they cannot physically leave their houses sick, uh, injured. So m much has to be done in order to guarantee the safety of those who are still there. Um, a final thought, because I'm sure viewers will want uh, me to ask you, is it still possible for you to contact your sister and family and are, are you getting regular reports from them and you know what are they going to be doing now in the next uh, couple of weeks or so well uh yeah my sister after she left i was able to speak to her right before i came here and she is still trying to process what happened because she was forced to leave her place and uh, the problem is we so far have been trying to deal with what was happening we didn't really think about what will happen in the future because it's still difficult to predict especially that the situation where my family still uh, lives in right now is unstable that the regime recently targeted the hospitals the markets the schools there so there's no sense of uh, uh, normal life where they live right now and this is why it's quite difficult to discuss what will happen in the future. Hi, it's very good to talk to you and uh, thanks for coming in and telling us about uh, what's going on. Thank, Thank you very much. Hi, uh, Hi, uh, from uh, 